So the great moderation is over and we're going to be in a world of great inflationary and stagflationary instability. These are all both cyclical and secular factors going to lead us to higher inflation over the medium term. Things are worse in the 30s. Why? In the 30s, we didn't have to worry about global climate change. It was not even in the radar screen. In the 30s, we didn't have to worry about AI destroying most jobs. There were not even computer, let alone AI. In the 30s, we didn't have to worry about implicit liability of governments. In addition to explicit debt, implicit liability coming from aging, social security and Medicare system that are pay-as-you-go funded, did not exist. Social security had been barely created and the average worker would die at the age of 60 before he or she would get the first social security check at the age of 62. And as ugly as World War I and World War II were, there were conventional wars. It was only at the end of World War II, the US got the bomb. Nuclear bombs were used in Hiroshima and Nagasaki to end World War II. This time around, if you're gonna have a war between great powers, it's not gonna be conventional because all these great powers have the nuclear bomb. Conventional is gonna become unconventional and we're the specter of a nuclear winter. So compared to the 30s, we have four mega threats, climate change, AI, unfunded implicit liability of the government and the risk of a nuclear winter that did not even exist in the 1930s. So the risk to destroy our own species, either through climate destruction or a nuclear winter or through AI destroying most of humanity is a bigger threat today than was even in the 1930s. For a number of reasons, inflation is rising and now central banks are entering an economic downturn not being able to cut policy rates, but having to rise them in order to fight inflation. So not only debt ratios are high, but the debt servicing ratios are now becoming higher and unsustainable. When people talk about what has happened with Silicon Valley Bank or with Credit Suisse or other financial institution, as if it's just some bad luck. It's not bad luck. I saw it coming, and that's what I said in the book. As we have an inflation problem, we'll have to raise interest rates, as we raise interest rates, high level institutions are going to have debt problems. And this is the beginning of manifestation of those debt problems. They go well beyond the banking system. It includes the corporate sector, it includes parts of the household sector, it includes governments, includes a, a large number of countries. So we're starting to see the mother of all of these debt crises. You have unemployment rates you haven't seen in decades. We have aging of population where the fall in labor force participation rate, we have restriction to migration, we have the great resignation, uh, we have uh, beginning of labor strife, both in the US and Europe. We live in a world in which uh, uh, governments will have to spend more because they have to fight at least five wars. One is a security war, everybody's gonna have to spend more on defense, Europeans against the Russian bear, Americans against the Russian bear, and China, the Chinese will spend more, Australia spend more, Japan is gonna spend more, India is gonna spend more. Everybody has to spend more on defense to fight either cold wars or hot wars. War number one. War number two, is gonna cost us a fortune to fight climate change. Trillions of dollars of public spending to either mitigate or adapt to it. Number three, either we spend a fortune to prevent the next the global pandemic, or like in COVID, if we don't do it in advance, expose the fiscal cost of picking up the mess are gonna be in the trillions of dollars. Four, a combination of still globalization, however reduced, and of automation and robotics, what people call globotics, is gonna imply massive disruption of jobs. They're gonna be wiped out because of uh, this technological and globalization revolution. Therefore, we have to have a wider social safety net to fight against these consequences of robotic and automation. And five, there is so much income and wealth inequality that unless you address with it with policy that redistribute income to those who are left behind, you'll have massive civil strife. Now, what about the geopolitics? The geopolitics implies that uh, there's geopolitical depression because you have a bunch of revisionist powers, China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, possibly Pakistan and others that are effectively allied. Uh, these uh, strategic rivals of the US and the West are essentially challenging the economic, trade, 
monetary, financial, investment, political, geopolitical, security, and military order that the US, Europe, and the West created after World War II. They want a different order. That's why we have a cold war is getting colder. We already have a hot war between Russia and Ukraine. It's going to get uglier. It could involve NATO. It could become non-conventional. And therefore, this geopolitical depression is going to be one of the key factors leading to deglobalization. Deglobalization was already occurring because there are winners and losers, because uh, environmental concern, because of labor concern. But now geopolitics is going to divide the world in two. It's going to fragment it. It's going to balkanize it. And rather than having free trade, now we're talking not only about fair trade, but also secure trade. Instead of offshoring, we're talking about reshoring or French shoring. And instead of just in time global supply chains, we are thinking about just in case global supply chains that have been redundant in case there is a shock with China and so on. All this leading to decoupling, to balkanization, to fragmentation, to the division of the world. And it's going to reduce potential growth and it's going to increase cost of production, causing stagflationary shock. And it's only a matter of time we're going to have COVID-23 or 24 or whatever else. There is a very strong correlation between global climate change and global pandemics. As we destroy the animal ecosystems by encroaching on them, what's happening is that animals that have uh, pathogens like pangolin, bats and others get closer to livestock animals and to humans. That's why we have these zoonotic diseases that transfer from animal to human. And that's why we get them more frequent and more virulent by encroaching on the ecosystem, they're closer, they make the animals sick and the humans sick. So because of climate change, man-made disaster, global pandemics are becoming more frequent and more virulent. And trust me, COVID-24 or 25 or whatever, the next pandemic is gonna be, maybe another more severe episode of bird flu, scientists are already telling us it's gonna be more severe than COVID-19. And COVID-19 led to dozens of millions of people dying an economic cost like the worst recession we had since uh, World War II, and fiscal cost in the trillions of dollars that we had spent a fortune to deal with the economic impact of that recession. So COVID-19 was a disaster economically, was a disaster fiscally, was a disaster from a health point of view in all dimensions, and the next pandemic is gonna be worse than COVID-19. AI, machine learning, robotic automation, as at least three collateral damages. One, it can lead to permanent technological unemployment, not only for routine jobs that are blue collar, they're gonna be automated, but even, even creative jobs uh, could be eventually disrupted by technology. Every time there is technological innovation, is usually fostered by governments. They want to build bigger weapons to fight bigger wars. It's happened throughout history, right? And this time around, whoever is going to win the race for AI, China or US, not only is going to dominate the industry of the future, but it's going to be the, also the dominant geopolitical, military, and security power in the world. That's why last year, Eric Schmidt, former CEO of Google, wrote a book together with Henry Kissinger, our foremost uh, geopolitical strategy in the US, saying the race between US and China on AI is not only about who's going to be the dominant economic power, but also the dominant military and security power. Because the nature of warfare, even in Russia and Ukraine, now depends on AI, machine learning, satellites, big data. So the nature of warfare is going to be very different.